the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. My dear friends in Christ, we come together this day giving glory and praise to our God, and today we celebrate the feast day of St. Kateri Tekakwitha. Friends, as we prepare to meet Christ Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we first take a moment of pause. Let us acknowledge our sins and so better prepare ourselves to more fully celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, always interceding for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who desired the Virgin Blessed Kateri Tekakwitha to flower among Native Americans in the life of innocence, grant through her intercession that when all are gathered into your church from every nation, tribe, and tongue, they may magnify you in a single canticle of praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the days of Ahaz, king of Judah, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, king of Israel, son of Ramallah, went up to attack Jerusalem, but they were not able to conquer it. When word came to the house of David that Aram was encamped at Ephraim, the heart of the king and the heart of the people trembled as the trees of the forest tremble in the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out and meet Ahaz, you and your son, share Jossab at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway of the fuller's field, and say to him, Take care you remain tranquil and do not fear. Let not your courage fail. Before these two stumps of smoldering brands, the blazing anger of Rezin and the Arameans and the son of Ramallah because of the mischief that Aram, Ephraim, and the son of Ramallah plots against you, saying, Let us go up and tear Judah asunder, make it our own by force, and appoint the son of Tabeel king there. Thus says the Lord, This shall not stand, it shall not be. Damascus is the capital of Aram, and Rezin the head of Damascus. Samaria is the capital of Ephraim, and Ramallah's son the head of Samaria. But within sixty years and five, Ephraim shall be crushed, no longer a nation. Unless your faith is firm, you shall not be firm. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, fairest of heights, is the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, the recesses of the north, is the city of the great king. God is with her castles, renowned as he as a stronghold. God upholds his cities forever. For lo, the kings assemble, they come on together. They also see and at once are stunned, terrified, routed. God upholds his city forever. Quaking seizes them there, anguish like a woman in labor, as though a wind from the east were shattering the ships of Tarshish. God upholds his city forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done, since they had not repented. Woe to you, Chrysan! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long ago repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than you. As for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? Will you go down to the netherworld? For if mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the church, especially the church in the United States, celebrates the feast day of St. Kateri Tekakwitha. St. Kateri was beatified in the 1980s and wasn't really sainted until quite recently. She was a Native American at the time when the colonial settlers came into this country. Kateri embraced Christianity, but at great cost. She lost her family, she lost her friends, but in some ways she did gain a new life, a new life in Christ. Friends, Kateri's name is a variation of Catherine, and Tekakwitha is one who gropes around because she had very compromised eyesight because she had smallpox at some point in her life. She lived her life in relative darkness, yet she was for so many and continues to be a point of light. Friends, it may seem that from time to time we dwell in the darkness. We grope around this world looking for something, struggling to find that which gives us light. But we know those words of St. Augustine continue to remain true. Our hearts are restless until we rest in Thee. The true light is the light of Christ. And when we accept that, and when we allow that to transform our hearts, our minds, we begin to change our world. We, we start being that light for others. And we help those who roam in the darkness of fear and doubt. We are that light of hope that light of peace, that light of tranquility, that light of Christ. How is God calling you to be that light today? St. Kateri, pray for us. And so knowing that our loving and merciful God always hears our prayers, we present our needs and the needs of this St. Paul family before God's holy altar. For Francis, our Pope Robert, our Bishop, for all who lead and guide the people of God, that they'll be strengthened and renewed in their faith, being a beacon of Christ's love, hope, and mercy to all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lead and hold power, that they'll see the face of Christ and the face of every person they have been called to serve, regardless of race, language, or way of life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer for all the sick and suffering that they know of God's healing presence today. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of those who, like Kateri, experience discrimination because of race, language, way of life, that they know that their life has meaning, that they know that their life has value, through the outstretched words and arms of this community of believers that echoes the words of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for all of our beloved dead, especially those who we now recall in the silence of our hearts. May they see the face of our loving God this day and live forever with all the saints in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, we know that you hear all of our prayers, those we've spoken aloud today and those that echo in the silence of our hearts. Lord, increase our faith that we may come to know you more fully and that we might be your light, your love, your peace to all we encounter. We ask these in all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Through the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And so with humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who desired the, the, the vir, virgin blessed Kateri Tekagwitha to flower among the nations in a life of innocence, grant through her intercession that when all are gathered into your church from every nation, tribe, and tongue, that, you may, that they may magnify you in a single canticle of praise. And as we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Blessed Virgin, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and you offer us your signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their example lends us courage, their fervent prayer sustains us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we now celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, with Paul, Kateri, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so, friends, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord be with you always. On behalf of all of us who call St. Paul as our home, may the Christ's peace be with you today and for all time. And so may the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ not bring any judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. <laughs> behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep all of us safe for eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of St. Kateri Tekagwitha, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, now and always, through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.